In the late 1950s, early 1960s, Canadair developed one of the most competitive long-haul transport aircraft of its kind. In its military role, it ferried cargo and personnel to and from European bases. In its civil version, it revolutionized how cargo companies operate and left a lasting legacy. It was the Canadair CL-44 and CC-106 Yukon. The CL-44 was built by Canadair in the 1960s to meet Canada's growing need to ferry cargo and personnel to and from Europe in support of Canadian operations there. The existing C-5 North Stars, introduced in 1946, were becoming obsolete and a replacement aircraft was necessary. The CL-44 shares a common route with the CP-107 Argus. Both were derived from the British design Bristol Britannia. The Canadian government bought the rights to domestically produce the Britannia in the mid-1950s. It was intended from the beginning of the Argus project that the Britannia would be developed into a cargo variant and a passenger variant. This was done to help offset the high labour costs in Canada through greater volume of production. Canadair built an entirely new unpressurized fuselage for the Argus to meet the low and slow requirements of anti-submarine warfare. The 44 would be a much more straightforward project as it would fulfill the same role as its designers at Bristol had attended it for. Some modifications were made by Canadair to meet the requirements of the RCAF. These included lengthening the unpressurized fuselage by 3.75 meters and the addition of two large cargo doors added to the port side. The design used modified Britannia wings, tail structure and controls. This allowed the 44s to accommodate 134 passengers with a crew of 9 or carry 29.5 tons of cargo. In the casualty evacuation role it could take 80 patients and a crew of 11. Canadair's internal designation for the new transport was the CL-44. Production began in 1957 while construction of the Argus was underway. The RCAF renamed their CL-44s as the CC-106 Yukon. The Yukon was 41.7 meters long, 11.2 meters tall, and had a wingspan of 43.4 meters. It was able to fly 8,993 kilometers cruising at a speed of 641 kilometers per hour and up to an altitude of 9,100 meters. This performance made the trip across the Atlantic a routine afternoon's activity. The first Yukon was ready by 1959. However, the rollout of the first prototype was a comedy of errors. The airframe was assembled in a hangar, but the door was too short to let it out. The Yukon's grand entrance was delayed until the door could be modified. The first batch of Yukons had unmodified Rolls-Royce engines and experienced a lot of troubles ranging from electrical failures to engines almost shaking loose. The RCAF wanted to use a modified version of the Rolls-Royce Tyne 11 engines, and so the Yukons remained at RCAF Station Trenton until they could be fitted. This led to the Yukon gliders, engineless airframes taking up space until the new ones could be fitted. Some remained there for almost two years. Once the teething pains were taken care of, the Yukon was officially taken on strength by the RCAF and performed well in their intended role. The first unit to form was 437 Squadron in 1961. They flew the 107s out of CFB Trenton until 1972 when they were replaced by the CC-137 Husky. Next to form was the 412 Squadron based at CFB Uplands. They flew two Yukons as VIP transports from 1961 until 1978. Around the same time as the cancellation of the Avro Aero project, the United States was looking to buy 232 long-range transport aircraft. Canada was looking to adopt the F-101 Voodoo as a long-range interceptor, and the purchase of the 44s from Canada Air would help offset that cost. The quantity of production would have also offset the 44's operating cost and made spare parts much more available. Unfortunately, the politics surrounding cancelling the Aero, a project based in Ontario, and funding the 44 based in Quebec killed the project in its tracks. The Americans pulled out of the deal and ordered the Boeing C-135 instead. In the early 1970s, the role of the RCAF was changing. The CF-5 was introduced in 1968 to fill a need for an inexpensive rapid deployment tactical fighter 
to support troop operations in Europe. The CF-5 would be based in Canada and ferried over to Europe when needed. This called for the development of long-range tanker aircraft. The Yukons were considered for this role, but the plan ultimately fell through when it was found that the operating costs would be very high, spare parts were becoming scarce, and that it was too slow as compared to the jets it would be serving. This precipitated the RCAF to sell off its inventory to private companies and replace it with a modified version of the jet-powered Boeing 707, called the CC-137 Husky. By 1978, all Yukons had been sold off or scrapped. In addition to the militarized version, Canadair decided to develop a civil version of the CL-44. While the construction of the Yukons was underway back in 1960, Canadair began looking for potential customers. Market research at the time showed that most companies weren't interested in a passenger version. Jets were in fashion, and the slower piston-powered aircrafts were less attractive, even with their higher efficiency. Cargo companies, however, did show interest. The operating cost projections were very favorable as compared with the contemporaries like the Super Constellations and the Douglas DC-6B. Cargo carriers Flying Tiger Line and Seaboard World Airlines motivated Canadair to develop a system to quickly load and unload its 29.5 tons of cargo. This led to the CL44D4 Swingtail. In addition to its large cargo doors, the entire tail section of the 44 could swing out, allowing palletized cargo to be easily loaded and unloaded. Cabin pressure was maintained by inflating a rubber bladder that sealed up the fuselage during flight. Canadair had to modify the windshields in the 44 after the FAA determined the visibility was insufficient for certification. A different set of windows were installed and the airframes underwent fatigue testing in order to be certified. Later, the windshield issue would relegate the CL-44 to operating in the Southern Hemisphere. Flying Tiger Line ordered 12, Seaboard World Airlines ordered 7, and Slick Airways ordered 4. There were other orders from the UK, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, and Japan, but these fell through, all due to politics. Canadair built 27 CL-44Ds in total, leaving four completed airframes unsold. These four were eventually sold to Lofleiter of Iceland on the condition they be stretched to fit more passengers. They operated the only civil passenger version of the 44. One of the 44s was turned into a monster. Known as the CL-44-0 Guppy, it was modified to carry oversized cargo by Jack Conroy Aviation. This strange-looking modification involved cutting off the top of the fuselage and building an enlarged section. The swingtail mechanism was retained to allow easy loading and unloading. The Guppy was supposedly very profitable in its role and is the only airworthy 44 left. Sporadic maintenance and engine run-ups have been kept up, although it hasn't taken to the air in many years. In the end, Canadair produced 39 CL-44s in two batches, 12 CC-106 Yukons and 27 CL-44Ds. Almost all the 44s ended up being sold to operators in South America and in Africa due to certification issues in North America and Europe. They flew them well into the 1990s when the last airframes were retired. Most were scrapped, but a few remain in pieces at airfields. One was even converted into a nightclub in Cuenca, Ecuador. Canadair's CL-44 was a great example of a technology well adapted to its role, but came too late to have a significant impact on the market.